uh, what we spoke of last week, uh, where we, I think we did a guidance and we had a dialogue uh, to clearly see, you know, that you are not in control. You as like a specific person, like there's no such such thing that you are orchestrating your life. There's nothing in the center of your experience orchestrating your life. Where everything you take yourself to be that is controlling life is actually just what is unfolding. It it is itself observed to be just a spontaneous unfoldment. So sometimes this this again just brings us into suffering. This very teaching that if I'm not in control, then you know, like as you said, maybe not taking responsibility for your actions or not going for certain things that, you know, like are just natural to you. That certain things are bringing about certain things that you want, uh, that you, that you're inspired to create. But actually, if anything, that, that teaching should be very liberating, you know, because obviously from your first, like from your, uh, experience, the, it, it truly feels like I am in control, you know, and that's a beautiful aspect of this. Like you, you obviously in the grand scheme of things, when we really zoom out, and this is your inner discovery that no, there's nothing in control. It's a total spontaneous movement. But then you come back into the 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 personal identity, and and yeah, you are very intimately in control, and you have choice. So you know, it's neither this or that. It's neither no choice or all choice. You have to learn to sort of balance these things out. Be so. So why I say it's liberating is because from the personal point of view you can do whatever you wish, like make the choice to do what you want and ultimately know that it is that greater intelligence working through you or, or as you knowing that your personal doing will be cleansed of anxiety of where I'm going to end up, or is this right for me? Am I going down the right path? Because these are the things that plague us, you know? These are the fears which we suffer. These are the things that lead to resistance when, you know, uh, situations turn into a, into something that we don't want them to. But knowing, right, so acting completely with that choice and that personal doership while knowing that I'm not in control cleanses all that anxiety, that fear of being on the wrong path of what may come about. Am I going to be okay? Because ultimately you're, you're seeing that, you know, it is all a spontaneous unfoldment and whatever is relevant, whatever needs to come up, whatever needs to be experienced, it, it will happen. So it's worth mentioning that because sometimes when we hear this teaching of non-doership, but we don't see it clearly, you know, we just hear about it, but we don't really fully experience that. We don't see it clearly. Then there's like a tendency to fall into the other side where it's like, oh, but then why do anything or... I can do anything and get like, you know, I'm not responsible for it. No, from the personal, like, and that's the, the that is the, the zooming in, zooming out. You, you, you are like totally zoomed in. You are the person, but totally zoomed out. You are not, you are that greater intelligence. You can't say I am this or that you can't, you can't just hide in one or you can't hide in the teaching either that I am just that greater intelligence and, you know, now neglecting the personal experience no mm -hmm. and that's the so that's where the it's like the middle path neither this or that not being imbalanced on either side from the personal side of things really taking the responsibility facing the uncomfortable doing what you want to what you're inspired to it's funny because you're not even in, necessarily in control of what it feels inspiring to you like for someone else here their interests and what they want to do in life is totally different for you it's totally different you don't really choose choose all those things right but like you you wish to bring those things about you wish to live that life you wish to sort of um you know just in, engage in those things day to day so you do that knowing that ultimately it is it is that it is the it is part of the total manifestation you know it is part of all that is of which you are just one part, you know, ultimately it is that greater intelligence, which is orchestrating all these movements, knowing this, have no fear, live life with a sense of wonder rather than fear about the future. Feel, feel that there is great freedom in uncertainty rather than many reasons to be afraid and to hold back and to build walls around you.
and to act out of selfishness, you know? So when we, when we are balanced on both sides, personal doership and no doership at all, then we, we live freely. Um, if we are imbalanced, then we will create some sort of another distortion. But if you're too identified with everything that you're doing, that, and you are too identified with being the doer, then you will always be plagued by pride, regret, guilt, anxiety, fear, never knowing, oh, am I on the right path? You see, so all these things get taken out of the equation. The moment you realize, yes, you know, I, in, in personal side, I do have all control and choice, but ultimately that choice is counterfeit. That choice is not really real. And again, you're not surrendering to something else or this greater intelligence that is over there, but rather your very own source, that which is more you than what you take yourself to be. And so this just, you know, allows you to just be happy here and now. This just allows you to, regardless of what your circumstances look like or whatever is arising for you, just um, live in that allowance and acceptance, letting what comes come, letting what goes go. When there is a great sense of doership, we don't let what comes come. We don't let what goes go. We, we try to control and manipulate everything and we judge everything and we fight against everything. And we waste all of our energy in this um, chase and this battle. That, that's really what the acceptance teaching comes down to here and now. You see right there? <laughs> no, that's really what all spiritual teachings come down to, just allowing you to just be content and be happy here and now. And then from that, you do anything you want. Work hard or, um, you know, you know, do something or, or engage in that relationship or whatever. So I'm not sure if that sort of completely addressed your confusion, but you can feel free to share anything. Um, yeah, what came up, what you said in the end in regards to uh, control, that's also a sense where I notice, um, it's almost like I set myself up for failure. Like I, I try to control or the mind uh, tries to control so many things. Uh, and I caught myself, well, what if I just let go of all of that? And if I just focus on just a couple of things, then I notice the mind judging it like, okay, well then it's not enough. So it, either it's, it's never enough. It's like, if I focus on just a couple, it's, uh, there's like a sense of wanting to do more, but, but if I focus on too many things, then like, there's no way I can focus on all those things. So I see how I, uh, just, just do what you can, yeah. you know, like that's ultimately all you can really do. Just do what you can and whatever you are able to do from there on, if the, if you just observe the mind judging and then don't, don't buy into it. Ult ultimately what you have done is what you could have done. What is being done is all that you can do from that point onwards, right? Whatever the mind judges or what, observe, observe that, observe this tendency to, to judge, uh, observe it from a distance and, and no longer buy into it. Whatever is, whatever you are doing, let that be enough. Whatever is arising, let that be enough. Whatever is coming in whichever form it is coming, let that be enough. Let that be your the current contents of your experience. Let that be your spiritual practice. Let that be your life here and now. And whatever's going, also let that go. If there are certain things being realized and certain contractions being realized or certain belief systems being realized and you see that they are useless and you see that they are influencing perhaps all this uh, anxiety and fear, just let be willing to let that go. You know, because, because by and see that like you're already by doing so you're in the position of the unknown we we try so hard to control the unknown and make it to the known we try to make our life predictable safe um secure and in doing so we actually are are, are just deeply living in a fearful state because first of all you, you you can never make this into something that is predictable and controlled that's a beautiful part of it but in living, right, the, the main acceptance teaching, letting what comes come, whatever is arising, arise, 
and letting what goes go. But in that, you are already in the position of the unknown. You are in the position of that which is aware, free of ideas, uh, free, free of personal identity, free of the one trying to control. Because you're observing even the one trying to control and orchestrate your life from a distance. In just this observation, that identification is already becoming looser. So really just to sum it up, just do what you can, do what you want to do. And then the, the judging of that, of what should have been done or what could have been done more, that is to completely discard. That is to no longer feed with your yeah. attention, engagement, identification. Yeah, thanks. No problem. <clears throat> Same also goes with our spiritual practice. Like there is something always trying to control that very thing. And it's something that's always trying to um, judge your progress. Again, watch that which is trying to manipulate. That Watch that which is trying to judge. Identifying at this level is what continues to keep us in that, you know? Discard that. Let that go. Let it arise, but, you know, no longer believe in it. 